Hello, it's Vic Coughlin, 616. How are you? Recently, an anti-gay Republican in America was caught soliciting homosexual sex from an 18-year-old. Shocking news, isn't it? It's not, is it? That is one of the least shocking headlines you'll read nowadays. It's amazing that whenever we hear about some prominent anti-gay far-right politician or someone within the church, we immediately sit there and go, right, how long before this guy is caught with a dick in his mouth somewhere in a hotel lobby? It's a story that should shock and appall us and offend us, but it doesn't anymore. Because over a long enough time period, anyone who is virulently anti-gay will be caught doing something gay. We should call it Haggard's Law. The story I'm referring to involves Indiana State Representative Philip Phil Hinkle. What kind of nickname is that? Right? Well, it's recently found out that an 18-year-old man uh, was offered money for sex by Phil Hinkle after he put an advert on Craigslist looking for a sugar daddy. Sweet. Now, he can join the club along with George Rikers and Ted Haggard and any number of anti-gay Republicans or anti-gay pastors who have been caught somewhere down the line with a cock in their ass. But here's a question. Why is this kind of thing most prevalent within those who claim to be anti-gay or against gay marriage? It's never within anything else. You never find this story anywhere else. When was the last time you turned on the news and they had something like breaking news? Well-known anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish, anti-Israeli, anti-Zionist David Duke was found to have posed for photos for a gay porn mag where he was wearing a bagel on his dick. He also was found in a hotel room jacking off over a Barbra Streisand album. In other news, well-known Palestinian supporter Norman Finkelstein was caught pissing on their flag. In similar vein, well-known anti-Islamic YouTuber Pat Condell was photographed sneaking into a mosque wearing a burqa. And most shockingly of all, the ghost of Linda McCartney is haunting an abattoir. None of these things ever happen, and yet if they did happen, you would be somewhat shocked by them. And yet, at the same time, when it happens when people who are anti-gay turn out to be gay, this is not a surprise to us anymore. Well, this brings me on to something that recently happened in Brazil, more specifically in Sao Paulo, where they have just decided they are going to have a heterosexual Pride Day. The City Council for South America's biggest city has recently adopted legislation calling for a heterosexual Pride Day to take place on the third Sunday of every December. The author of the legislation, Carlos Apolinario, said the idea for heterosexual Pride Day was not anti-gay, but a protest against the privileges of the gay community. Now you might wonder, well what are these privileges? Well when asked, he mentioned that Sao Paulo has a huge gay pride march every year in a place called Polista Avenue. Whilst the March for Jesus, which is organised by evangelical groups, was banned from being held there. Now, I did a lot of research and I tried to figure out what was the reason they gave for this, or for this March for Jesus not being allowed to go down Palista Avenue. Because it had actually been in Palista Avenue for every year since 2005. But it's now been relegated down to another location. I don't see why they're having a heterosexual pride day in response to this. Because it doesn't seem that this is anything to do with them being straight. Uh, and it's certainly not the fault of gay people it was banned. It's probably, however, a lot to do with the fact that the organisers of the March for Jesus were recently held in US custody for trying to smuggle money in across the border. And much of it, ironically, was kept in the geezer's bibles. Apollinario also said, I respect gays and I am against any kind of aggression made towards them. Then he said this, I have no trouble coexisting with gays as long as their behaviour is normal. What the fuck does that mean? It's quite depressing that the only example that he could come up with was the fact that they've been relegated down to a different venue for their March for Jesus. That's an example of the privileges that are shared. And whilst Sao Paulo does have a very vibrant gay scene, what you have to understand is it also has a huge problem with homophobia. This legislation comes just weeks after a conservative congressman in Brazil stated that blacks are more promiscuous and that he was prejudiced against gays. And just last month, a group of teenagers attacked and maimed some guy who was a father because they thought he was gay. Why? Because he hugged his teenage son. But the biggest privilege that gays have within Brazil is no doubt when it comes to the murder rate. Last year alone, 260 gay people were murdered in Brazil. Right, now to put that into some different context for you, that's one gay person was murdered every 36 hours. Yes, they're so overprivileged, aren't they? Now, I know what some people are going to say, and I've seen people make comments about this on videos regarding this issue. They go, well, gay people have a pride march, why can't straight people? As if gay pride marches just sprung out of nowhere, like we were, we, it was all a level playing field. 
everything was fine, and suddenly gay people, for no reason whatsoever, decided, hey, we don't want to pride much. <laughs> it's okay to be gay. No, gay people tend to be a group who, within a great deal of, unfortunately, so-called civilised society, uh, are made to feel ashamed and embarrassed for what they are. They are told that they are wrong. They are immoral. What they are and what they do is disgusting, and they should be ashamed. And so, in response to that, they decide to say, fuck you, we're not ashamed, so we're going to have a pride march. It's not really a pride march, because the, you are born this way, there is no pride in being born a certain way. But what they're actually saying is, we are not ashamed. That's what it's about, yeah? We are not ashamed. You can't really call it a we are not ashamed march, it doesn't have the same ring to it. So all you dickheads who walk around going, well, we don't know what the way we're working, we... Uh, that's why, spastic, there has never been any real significant amount of shaming of straight people. And if you can find me examples, please do. Otherwise, grow the fuck up and start being thoughtful. But we should actually feel sorry for these people. I know we look at people like Ted Haggard, George Rikers, this guy, Philip Hinkle, and all these fuckers on this heterosexual pride mark, and we're going to feel resentment for them, and we're going to sort of dislike them. We should in fact feel sorry for them, because they are a product of the very thing that they perpetuate, the shame of it. This is why you end up with so many anti-gay homosexuals who are in the closet and protesting against the very thing they are, because they have been made to feel ashamed of it, and they are so shameful of it, they want to try and stop everyone else from doing it. Or you could say maybe it's just them feeling, well, if I can't have any, no other fucker's going to have any. That's really where this comes from. That's where this all boils down to. There is so much shame placed on being gay that gay people become anti-gay themselves. But then nature instinct takes over, and eventually you're going to be found rimming some pensioner in a shrub you just met at a truck stop. And at the end of the day, that's the biggest thing. This heterosexual pride march, it should really be called homosexual shame. Richard the Dick Coughlin, 616. Good night, mate. God be less.